Hello, good day, and welcome to Programming Language Compared. Okay, so we're going to be looking at complex number in the Go programming language. And we can expect that things should look a little bit like C and C++, but hopefully it should be easier to use. And I'm going to say that it's easier um, to use and much more straightforward. So let's jump in. So in Go, um, complex numbers are built in. So you don't have to worry about it being provided as a language extension to the language. It's built in. So it understands three plus four i, for example. And you can create complex number by using a complex um, function, global function, that you can pass two numbers to, and it gives you back a complex number. The other thing is all your advanced operations. So basic operation, just like C and C plus has basic operation like plus addition modification is available to you, but if you want to do other things like power and absolute values and stuff, those are provided in a package. Um, just like C and C++, any advanced math operation beyond the, uh, um, you know, addition, subtract, modification, and divide is in a math package for even regular number. So complex number is no different in that regard. Um, so it's the same in both where the advanced mathematical operation and complex numbers are in an external package. But we'll see that even that is very easy to use also. And for us, we're just going to be trying to do some simple things, right? We're going to do it like use usual addition and so on, and then some one of the advanced operation. So let's go take a look at the code. All right. So like I said, um, using complex number in Go is just a pleasure. It's what I would expect from a modern language. And even though C plus has been around a long time, the fact that though they've stand, um, had new standards in the language, I think um, it should be easier to do. It. Now I know how my Mac, um, the compa C plus is compiled on my Mac was troublesome and given incorrect results and so on, but still just using it felt like if I was doing it in C. And you'll see the difference here when we use then Go. One of the first things we're gonna do, of course, is we're gonna copy um, our C++ example, and we're gonna make that our Go example, and CD into the Go directory, and I'm gonna remove A that and that, and then I'll move my main to main.go. Right, then I start up my code editor, and I'm gonna zoom in because I noticed in the last video um, it was a little small, it's the font. So sorry about that. So let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna start modifying this now to make it a Go program. And the first thing I'm gonna do is package and main. And then I turn this if into FUNC and oh, come on. Sometimes the editor wants to be too helpful. And of course, I don't need this return statement. And sorry if I'm jumping around here. All these C out, I'm gonna replace those with FMT print line. So I'm going to do that, 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 and I'm going to do FMT, that print line, okay? And these end lines, I'm going to replace those with close parentheses, like that, okay? I don't need them. Um, all right, what else do we need to do? Well, um, so that should work for that. Now, for, for these lines, just because, like I said, C++ 14 and even C seem to understand what a complex number is when you write it like this, but you still have to do like in C++, say complex double or float or whatever. And, um, you know, in Go, I can just say var. I'm going to create a var. So actually, let me just turn all these guys into var and save myself some writing. And I'll fix that just now. So I'll say var. Now here, um, because Go knows how to print out a complex number, I'm gonna just going to do this and take out that and so just put a comma here and here I don't need auto I need var c and that's fine and then this if if I want to create a complex number from some numbers um, whether it be float ins or even rune I can use the comp built-in complex function so that's one way I can do it that looks sort of like cc plus plus where you call um, this function here though it's in go it's a function whereas in cc plus well in c plus plus you actually creating a object and it looks very similar, but just trust me that they're very different. We'll see that when we talk about classes and creating objects in C++. And so, yes. So here I'm saying that oh, I want to create a complex number out of a complex number out of these two numbers, store that in C, and then I want to add to C another complex number I create like that from this function. Um, of course, we don't need the insertion operator. And so here I can say var and go low multiple assignments, but here you do it like C5, and then you can say come up this way. So that tells us that oh, we have two complex numbers, this one that's going to go into Z4, and this guy is going to go into Z5. All right, here we don't need this, of course. Well, um, we can put commas between 
all of these so just two commas and since this is a new line i don't need this last one to be a new line i just need a close parenthesis and of course we have extra semicolon which go fmt remove for me and now i have a program uh, oh i don't need void here so um, after this save and everything should i have a valid program now and this is all there is now we just try and run it and i get exactly what i expect a is five plus three i and notice how it printed out almost like c plus was c plus was printed out with open parentheses five comma three close parentheses so it sort of looked like a, like this and i think they can do a little bit better with a printer now how to print it out here i see it as an imagine um it's a complex number because i see the i um, if C++ ever have a way to print out like a list or something, I wonder how they'll do it. Maybe they'll put square bracket and that's how they differentiate it. And if they want to print out a tuple, then I don't know. But we'll, we'll talk about all that later. But I really like how Go prints it out. And Go is not going to be the only language that's going to print out sensibly, but I was really disappointed in C++. And this is a language, like I said, I used to really love. I still like it a little bit, but don't love it as much. And everything here is working as expected. Um, my B is the correct um, value. Um, printing it out, C is the correct value, and notice for Z4 and Z5, correct value again. If I do the conjugate, and I do that, and multiply it and run it, um, I get the correct answer. And in terms of using functions, so um, here you can get, oh, by the way, if you want to get the imaginary part of a number, so FMT print line, if you want to get the imaginary part of A, so imaginary part of IMG of A is equals to just what you think, IMAG of a and the real part is real um, and if you want to use function like to get the absolute value so fmt that print line um, abs absolute value of a um, is equals to um, we're going to get from the math package so we'll get cmplx that abs and there we go and we say pass a and if we look and see what's imported it's imported from the math package this math, so complex from the math package so complex is a sub package and of course they're going to be many more um, functions there, a cosine, a tan, and all this other good stuff, exponent, and so on. Um, so fairly easy um, to get access to it, but um, let's run this now, and there we go. There's the absolute value. There's the imaginary part of a, which we said a is five plus three high. Very, very easy, very straightforward. This is how I would expect a modern language to allow you to use complex number. I, I just felt like it was so difficult in C in C++. But at C, I understand I give a pass to because it's been around a long time. So I'm a little disappointed that if they come up with new standards of the language, um, why they wouldn't change it, um, make things that they add easier to use. They wouldn't break anything because they're just adding it anyway. So why not make it easier and nicer to use? Okay. Um, pretty much that's it. Um, very boring how to use C complex numbers in, in Go. Um, all right, that's it for today's video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please hit the subscribe button, thumbs up the video, suggestion, constructive criticism, anything I can do to help you or to help me and this channel, please put them in the, in the, in the link um, in the comments. Um, follow me on Twitter, at Straversity1. Instagram is Straversity. Um, I have included in the description below, and I'll start putting in the videos, my Bitcoin address, Litecoin address, uh, Ethereum address, and also um, PayPal at Stravorsity.com for those of you who want to contribute if you can afford to. Um, there's not a requirement, just for those people who want to and can afford to. The video is going to be free here, and even when I launch them um, on my own site, um, they're going to be free or pay what you, you can. So that's it. Literally pay what you can if you can't afford it. If you can afford it and you don't want to pay, that's fine too. <laughs> all right. I love to make in the videos. And so that's it. Um, all right. Thanks for your time. See you in the next video. Take care. Have a great day. Bye.